Hello and welcome to this tutorial that's going to look at a superb plugin that deals very quickly and very powerfully with a big problem that we have as video editors, be that in After Effects or Premiere Pro, and that's matching cameras. Quite often we have got at least two cameras, if not more, and they don't actually match because there's been some kind of mistake. Now this is a talk that I did, and unfortunately one camera was remote, it was just running with nobody behind it and the other one had somebody behind it. Now the camera that had somebody behind it we got the white balance right but the camera that was remote and was just switched on and left we got the color balance seriously wrong. And you can see that the color balance is way out. Now this would require me to go in and make changes and if I were to show you the whole timeline you'd see that I've actually got lots of file formats, they're 4 gig each. This was recorded with a Ninja 1, the second one with a Ninja 2. This is by Atmos, the Ninja, they record in um, ProRes. A very good device to keep your HDV cameras. I've got an old HDV camera, I've taken the HDMI output into a Ninja. It gives me very high quality recording, which is in ProRes as opposed to HDV, but, but that's neither here nor there. The problem I have is that with the Ninja 1, I've clearly got five files that I'd need to apply the same thing to because the problem is common to all the files that were recorded. So I'd need to sort that out and I'd need to create a preset, save the preset and apply that to all the different ones to deal with it. But there is this fantastic plugin that deals with this problem very quickly. And of course, time is money. So if you can solve a problem like this with virtually one click, then that's where we need to go. Now, the product is by Revision and it is called Rematch. And this plugin really just looks at matching cameras. Now, there are two versions. The version that I'm going to show you is the one that will match any two cameras, be they recorded at the same time, or to be honest with you, be they recorded in different times and different places, you can still choose one as a dominant camera to match the other one too, which makes it very powerful. And the other version is great for dealing with stereo. So if you've got stereo, or, or what some people call 3D, but, but stereo recording to give depth, and you want to match those two cameras together, then you go for the Pro version, which also gives you the stereo option. Let me just show you the pricing so you've got an idea of what's involved. To get the full version, which is dealing with just cameras without being 3D, without being stereo, then you're looking at this price at the moment, 89.95 at the time of recording. If you want to go for the one that matches stereo cameras to make sure that they're absolutely matched, then you want to go for the pro version. And the pro version also gives you a lot of other abilities to do some pretty special stuff when it comes to getting rid of glints and flares and all sorts of bits and pieces. So this is a very powerful but deceptively simple effect to use that can save you a lot of time for matching cameras. So if I go back to the problem I have, this is the good camera that's got the white balance right. This is the one that got the right balance terribly out. And we need to solve the problem. How do we solve the problem? We go and find that particular effect, which is already loaded. So rematch color. The other one is rematch stereo, which is the one that deals with stereo 3D shots, which we're not dealing with. We're just going to deal with the stereo color. Take it and apply it to the clip that's got the problem, which is in the top layer at the moment. And then all we need to do is go and find it in the effects control panel. Here it is, rematch opened up and choose what is the reference image. So at the moment, the problem image is in video two. The reference image, the one that we want to match it to is in video one. So we go to video one and bang. It's pretty much matched. If I just turn the video layer two on and off, you can see that those are looking pretty similar. In fact, that's a superb match. Now I do have other options. I'm just going to run through some of them. I'm not going to go through all of them, but just to show you that to start off with, that with one click, if you like, I've been able to match those up and I could move on at this point or I can refine it as I wish. I'm just going to open up the reference window just so you can see what's going on. So if I go to window and I go down to reference monitor, you can see this is the reference monitor and I can choose a scope. So if we start off with, say, the vector scope, this is looking at color information and we turn the effect off and on. So that's off and on, you can see the shift that has taken place very quickly. And if I go to the YC waveform, that's luminance and color. This is the original, sorry, this is the effect applied. If I turn that off, that's how it originally looked. And it's been tightened right down and shifted simply by applying rematch color. And then we can also choose to use different approaches. The two that I find I use the most are going to be mean shift and gain and offset. And if you look at this graph when I change to gain and offset, you'll see that it tightens up a bit. This blue curtain at the back kind of glows a little bit, but when I choose gain and offset, 
you can see that tightens a bit and the glow kind of disappears. So for me, the best choice is gain and offset. You've also got things like histograms, which are a bit more specialised, and you can see that gives some weird results. So what I use most of all is mean shift or gain and offset, and it's done with this very simple approach. Now, there are other options down here. You can see that we've got one that says colour space, and I'm just going to show you the help document to very briefly explain what we've got here. It says, RGB and lab colour spaces are supported. Lab is useful when colour differences are more due to hue differences than luminant differences. And they do actually advise that you can possibly even cascade it, so you can do an lab and an RGB, or an RGB and then a lab if you really have problems with matching cameras. Now, I found that if I go for the lab colour space, some of the colours taken out. So at the moment, when I look between the two, so if I turn video one and video two off, I've got a bit of colour in both of those. So I've got a little bit of colour because the sun was shining through the window. So I've got a little bit of, of sort of oranges in there. If I turn this off, turn this back on, you'll see that there are some oranges in there. But if I go to the lab colour workspace, you'll see that I've kind of lost some of the, the colour and the colour match isn't quite the same now. That's pretty much lost most of the colour, whereas this one's still got some colour. Whereas if I go back now to the RGB workspace, I've still got some of that colour so that the cameras actually match per the environment they were in. But it's worth playing with these colour spaces to work out what's going to work for you, what's going to be best. I'm just going to shut the reference window. One problem, however, that you have with the effect inside of Premiere Pro is actually to do with the way that Premiere Pro sends out information when a piece of footage comes to an end. If you look here at the end, you'll see that the reference shot here stops, but the actual effect carries on here. So if I pull into the area where there is no reference shot underneath, you'll see that it goes black. This is the way that Premiere Pro works, apparently. I've actually checked this through with Revision. What happens is, in Premiere Pro, it sends out something like a zero, but in After Effects, it actually sends out a one, so it carries on working in After Effects. doesn't work in Premiere Pro. So you need to put something in there to solve the problem. You still need to have a reference shot. Now, if I want to see the reference shot, I'll just show you under the transfer model, right at the end, by the way, you can see show image used to get color from, so you can actually see the original there if you want to. But obviously, at this point here, there is nothing. So if I go down to show image, there is nothing to see. So what I need to do is go and get a, an image from this reference shot. And if I want to do that, I can actually go and grab a still image. Now, we know how to do that. You can choose the grab a still image, export a frame here. When you export a frame, which I've got here, here's a, here's a, a frame. I can just take that frame. I can drop it in and pull it across. And then at this point, everything carries on without any problems whatsoever because there is a reference frame underneath. Now, reference frames don't even have to be on. Okay, so you can actually turn a layer off. So say you had a couple of cameras, but you wanted to reference them to something completely different. You could take a still image, which you could put into video three. So if I wanted to, I could take this item, I could drop it up here in video three, and I could extend it all the way through. So that at the moment, that's taking over as a still image. I can turn it off and I can choose my clip and I could say use the reference image in video 3 and it would still work fine and you wouldn't see the reference image. So you've got to have a reference image underneath everything that you're using in Premiere Pro or on top. It doesn't have to be on but it does have to be there or else you end up with that dark frame problem that we had before. If I was just to pull this back, you'll see we've got the dark frame because there is nothing there as a reference image, simply because the way that Premiere Pro actually exports an item. Now, in this particular production, I'm going to go on and do a multicam sequence that I'm going to cut between the two. So for me, it was important to use the original shot as is all the way through so that the two cameras really match should the lighting conditions change, should a cloud go over the sun outside the window and the light coming on me changes in one camera, by using the reference image of the other camera that matches, it would also update the other image. Now that's okay as long as you're doing that kind of approach, but sometimes you really want to match frame, it says match every frame, but you could match to a still image and you can store multiple still images to use as a match. So another advantage of the revision effect is you can say, look, I don't want to use a, a changing piece of footage. I want to use a constant still image, and I can actually choose which still image I'm going to use. 
I can select and store different still images and we can use those as references that we're going to match our cameras to. So that's a very brief introduction to rematch. I personally think that at $89.95 it's going to pay for itself very very quickly because you're going to be able to make your cameras look absolutely matched without any work at all without having to fiddle around and do an awful lot of effort and of course time is money so by spending this amount to get the basic version you're going to save your money back in no time in my opinion and of course it works in After Effects as well which I'll, I'll cover in a separate tutorial. If you work with stereo cameras in 3D then I think that really getting the Rematch Pro is a no-brainer. Again, it will pay for itself in no time. Those two cameras will be absolutely matched, and the end result is not going to be difficult on the eye, but actually going to work very well indeed. Well, I hope you found this introduction to Rematch useful. I think it's an absolutely fantastic plugin and something that I've been waiting for for a very long time. My name's Andrew Davis, and thanks for watching.